Before looking at the details of the console, you should spend a few moments becoming familiar with the SD9 work surface. The SD9 is driven using a combination of physical faders, buttons, assignable rotaries and a touchscreen interface. The lower area of the surface has 24 touch-sensitive motorized faders split into two groups or banks of 12. You can build up to four banks of faders on each side. The bank select buttons switch between the banks and pressing and holding a bank switch changes both the left and right sides to the same selection. Working around the surface, starting at the top right, there's a USB socket for saving and loading sessions, the controls for the screen brightness and lit lights, the headphone and talkback section, the solo bus and master level controls. Immediately to the right of the screen, there's a single strip of channel controls. These give access to the standard channel parameters, filters, EQ, dynamics and inserts. Jumping over to the other side of the console, on the far left is the snapshot control panel and the macro buttons. The macro buttons are just user programmable shortcut buttons. Just to the left of the touchscreen are the quick select buttons. These assign selected channel functions to the under screen rotaries. So, if pan is selected on the quick select buttons, the rotaries under the screen control the pan for the channels on screen. If gain is selected on the quick select buttons, the 12 rotaries become gain controls. There are two buttons to the left of the under screen rotaries that change the way that these rotaries work. The option all button and the second function button. Pressing and holding the option all while making an adjustment will actually make the adjustment on all the channels in the bank. This is great for quickly setting up lots of channels with the same basic settings, maybe switching EQs in or dialing in a high pass filter. The second function button gives access to a set of additional functions. For example, the second function of an AUX send level control is the AUX pan and the pre-post switching. When second function is pressed, the screen changes the highlight of the controls to show this change of function. The 15-inch touchscreen is used for configuring the console, selecting parameters to adjust, naming and almost every other function. The touchscreen is actually pressure sensitive, so it needs a firm touch. Light touches don't work so well, and if you stab it with your pen, you're likely to scratch the screen. On the master screen, most of the setup is driven by the large menu buttons across the top so it's generally just a case of touching and selecting the options and settings you need. On the channel screens, there are specific areas of the screen to touch. For example, to open the input setup on a channel, you touch the top input area of the screen. To open the EQ or Dynamics panel, touch the middle processing area of the screen. Auxes are selected by touching the rows of aux pots and output setup is accessed by touching the bottom of the screen. As the various elements of the channel are touched, or as quick select buttons are pressed, assignments are made to the rotaries under the screen and to the channel strip to the right of the screen. The screen shows these assignments by surrounding the on-screen controls with a colored ring or halo. So, touch a row of auxes on the input channels, and that row shows pink rings on the screen controls as they are assigned to the rotaries under the screen. Touch an input channel to select it, and its background turns gold. All of the controls on that channel are now assigned to the strip of channel controls to the right of the touchscreen. There is one rotary that needs a special mention, the touch and turn control. If you need to make adjustments to the settings or parameters on the master screen, for example, effect settings or matrix send level, Levels, the control to be adjusted is touched on screen and that parameter can then be adjusted using the touch and turn. As with the input channels, the colored halo will follow the assignments made. Finally, it's worth locating a couple of the physical connections you might need now. The headphone output is on the right side of the console just under the wrist rest. And if you're using a D-Rack, its Cat5 connection plugs into the rear of the desk. And please, Make sure your keyboard and mouse are plugged in.